Welcome to Digital Asset News to get top stories in crypto. And I'm bringing on a bite sized piece. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, there's a lot of good information coming about, and there's some couple of reasons of why November is going to be a very bullish month. We had a great October. I think we're having a better November. So, the first thing we're going to take a look at is uh, market data. We're going to take a look at three reasons for this bullish momentum and what's going on. And uh, also, we're going to take a little story about uh, Google and uh, backed uh, dabbling into the Google. Play Store and how they're part marketing a partnership as far as with Google. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at a uh, token that is integrated with Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. Crazy, right? Anyhow, so we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on into the market. So today is a beautiful day. Saturday, getting the things done a little bit late because I've been uh, lounging around the beach this morning. So hey, what are you going to do? Not a bad life. But uh, here's what we have as far as the market so we've got uh 2.31 trillion and even though we're down a little bit i think people mostly know what's going on and what's going on is that hey uh, we've had a heck of a run-up and we're going to uh, actually see a little bit of a pullback and that's usually how things go uh bitcoin price is 54.4 daily sentiment is uh, pretty neutral but i expect it to go a little bit more bearish uh, over the weekend and then we take a look at uh just the sentiment analysis of course we're using trade the chain sentiment analysis links in the description we take a look at bitcoin i think it's what people know because if we take a look at just the the one day sentiment uh, everything in green here, of course, is uh, is positive or bullish, and red we we turn a little bearish. And uh, as the price has been uh, kind of going up, people get a little bearish because they're like, wait, wait, wait. We went from like forty thousand to fifty five, fifty six thousand in a very short amount of time. There should be a pullback coming, and indeed there is. And we take a look at the hourly sentiment, same type of thing. If we take a look over the uh, the week long. We're like, yeah, as things start to, to go up, they're like, I don't know about this. And then off it goes. So that is essentially what's going on with the market. We're pretty much moving uh, sideways as far as what is going on. And uh, it's just one of those lazy Saturdays. Uh, although XRP up 8%. Watch out. That is great news. All right. So that's what's uh, the first part of the market data. And let's just dig deep into a little bit more. And what I like to see is just uh, some analysis, little on-chain stuff. Um, first thing though, not on chain per se, but uh, Bitcoin logarithmic growth curves. And uh, this is just a, a great chart. You can find this at lookintobitcoin.com. I'll link it at the very end. And as you can see here, let I me mean, just take a look at this. The, uh, the middle portion is kind of like obviously middle of the road, top is where it's very bad, and the lowest is at the low points. But as we can see, it's just logarithmically everything is going up into a nice little crescendo into the end of 2022. And uh, we can see that everything kind of follows along this little middle line point, right? But uh, if we take a look here and we take a look at uh, some of the peaks, the peaks have happened just in the four year cycle, like we always talk about. And uh, this, you know, we peaked above everything. This was in the big bull run in 2013. Also, we had this uh, peak right here in 2017. And look what we have over here. If we kind of scroll in or zoom in, We've got everything kind of like in the middle, just like it was before, but we haven't reached these peak marks. And when does it usually come? Eh, about right here. And what is this really saying that we could be? About 147, 150,000. I don't think it's gonna be that high. I think somewhere around uh, 100 to 150 will be, I'd be okay with that. And that's just what this, uh, what the logarithmic growth curve says. Then on top of that, we also take a look at uh, the pie cycle top. And uh, I've been talking about this the last three days, but remember, there's been four times when it's happened, uh, first time was in 2013. Also in 2013 it happened. This is when the uh, in the yellow the 111 day moving average uh, goes on top of the 350 day moving average. So we had it twice in 2013, once in 2017, and we actually had it happen just a little bit ago when we topped out around $65,000 or so in April. But one thing I want you to make notice. See where the 111-day uh, moving average, this yellow line right here, it starts to, as soon as it crosses, it just kind of, uh, there's a divergence, and it just opens up. Then it comes back together, then it opens up. Comes back together, opens up, comes back together, and look at what we're doing now. We're opening back up to where I think we start to go higher and higher and higher until hopefully we reach those, uh, those good numbers. And then lastly, I'll just leave you with this. And this is just a quick little chart. My big thing is uh, I'm not a, t a chart person, technical analysis person. And I love in the comment section, people like, don't use technical analysis. You're not a TA guy. Hey, I'm just trying to learn. You know, you got to improve yourself, I think, right? So I'm looking at this. The thing that I always see is this RSI, the Relative Strength Index. And it seems like every time 
we start to go above this 70 point, we got a big dip down, right? It doesn't happen all the time. It's just TA. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy, I think, sometimes. But again, if when we go above it, down, above it, down, 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 above it, down, down. Then the same thing over here, down, down, down. And I think we see it over this way. We had a big ups, upswing. Whoops, hold on. Now you can see the RSI. Sorry, let me do that again. So over here, down, up, down, up, down. And then over here, we're going all the way up. And then what happens? Down. And then we're slowly building up again. So I believe we'll probably have the same pullback that we have every every Sunday or Monday. And my friend Alex Mascioli, he told me, he goes, the easiest play I've been doing for the last 12 weeks is I buy everything on Tuesday and I sell on a Saturday or a Sunday uh, because, or a Saturday, because that's like just clockwork. And it's been working out pretty well for him. Anyhow, so that's what we have as far as for the market data. Let's jump into the three reasons for a little bullish momentum besides what we just took a look at. So this was an article brought to us by the friends of the show, JP Morgan. Just kidding, they're not friends of mine. Uh, and it talks about institutional investors um, are dumping gold for Bitcoin, seen as a better inflation hedge. And it states here there's three key drivers. And I think this is the, the same thing we've been talking about on the show. The first one is that the recent assurances by U.S. polymakers policymakers that there's no intention to follow China's steps and ban the usage or mining of cryptocurrencies. Uh, we saw Jerome Powell, uh, we saw Gary Gensler from the SEC say the same exact things. We don't care really about cryptocurrencies except for the stable coins because we want to build our CBDC or the digital dollar and we don't like those stable coins competing with the US dollar. That's essentially what's going on. Just opinion. Now I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, the second reason they say is uh, the rise, the recent rise of the Lightning Network and second layer payment solutions. And then uh, the president of El Salvador claimed that 3 million people or Salvadorians are using uh, the Bitcoin wallet Chivo. And I was like, I wonder how much the Lightning Network has actually grown. Well, if you take a look at like nodes, and this is from Bitcoin Visuals, this is bitcoinvisuals.com forward slash lightning. These are the nodes themselves have just pretty much grown over time. And we have those people who are putting that much uh, effort time and effort into building nodes or being part of the node and being part of the light network, things are moving in the right direction. So it makes total sense. And then uh, lastly, the third reason is the reemergence of inflation concerns among investors. And they're all freaked out because of inflation, which uh, really Jerome Powell from the uh, Fed said, ah, it's just going to be a little bit. And it's like, oh, it's been sustained. And then, you know, in six months, he'd be like, well, it's a little bit higher than we thought. But what are you going to do? So we'll see what he, he says in the very end, but it wasn't going the way that he wants to. Then lastly, it states, the trend of funds flowing out of gold in the Bitcoin has reemerged in recent weeks. In May, JP Morgan saw the opposite trend where funds flowed out of Bitcoin into gold, which I thought was odd, and I'm gonna tell you why. More than 10 billion has flowed out of uh, gold ETFs. In the same time period, more than 20 billion has flowed into Bitcoin funds. So I'm gonna challenge you I just want to take a look at some price action recently and over the last 10 years as far as the number one crypto, Bitcoin, as, a, as it compares to gold. And before I go on, uh, just so you know, I own Bitcoin, gold, and silver. I have, uh, I have no animosity towards any of them. I'm just here as an investor. So take a look at this. So this is the gold price. What I did was I just uh, put it up. Let's see if I can bring it in here. Yeah, perfect. I put it in as for the year. And the year, it's just all over the place, right? That's just the gold price. All right. Maybe you got it at uh, 1900 Or maybe right now you bought it at 1760 Not too bad, but not the gains you were hoping for. But again, you always think, like me, like, ah, eh, just a hedge. Well, let's take a look at, I don't know, two years. So in two years, not so great. So maybe it's a hedge, but you're not making a lot of money off it. And actually, you're kind of losing money. But again, just a hedge, right? Then in five years... Ugh, this is not looking good for me. If I bought it down 1100 and uh, well, actually, no, excuse me. It's actually looking pretty good for me because I bought it at 1100 and now it's over at 1700 But let's take a look at 10 years. So in 10 years, again, is it a hedge? Eh, whatever. Depends on when you bought it. Because in 2011, I might have bought it at 1700 bucks maybe. And uh, over here, it's around 1730 So again, not the... Uh, uh, what I thought it might be as a store of value, perhaps, 
But if I'm trying to make money or anything like that, this is not the asset to do it. I'm just that's just how it is. And then well, people say, but it's a hedge, Rob. It's a hedge. But remember, these dollars that you are saying like this is awesome. Just remember this. Uh, the thing we just talked about as far as inflation, it's still two percent per year. So in all honesty, you have to outperform uh, the price of gold dramatically just to break even, and you're not even doing that. Now then, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So here's the last year, kind of the same thing of like we just saw with uh, gold, a little volatile, right? I mean, look, we could have been down in the dumps, 63,000 here at the top, and then down here at 31,000, that's never good. But we are back to 54, 55,000, so hey, pretty nice day. Let's take it back. Let's go over two years. Okay, now we're talking. So over two years, sweet Mary and Joseph, I could have been, I could have bought it anywhere around here, and I would have been massively in profit. Okay, let's take it over five years. Let's see what we got. Again, looking pretty dosh darn good. 9,000, maybe 20,000. I'd still be at least 2, 3x. Let's take it back to as far back as we can go. Well, 480, 480 bucks, 379 or whatever else. So again, if anybody's out there and they're saying, you know what, if you want to get rich, you got to invest in gold. The numbers don't support that. If you want to say it as a hedge, I guess. But in all honesty, again, you have to... Uh, take into account for inflation. So um, that is the bullish news. And this is why I think that we're going into November as far as like a tailwind. I think we're going to see some pretty good numbers, especially as money potentially flows out of Bitcoin and this uh, advent of a potential Bitcoin ETF, which may be good or bad, but at least it'll cause a lot of buzz. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece where we talk about Google and backed. First of all, Backed, we've been covering forever. And Backed was like one of those, those companies I thought was going to do really great because it is from the International uh, Continental Exchange or ICE Intercontinental Exchange, which is uh, backed up by the New York Stock Exchange. And I thought it'd be great. And it's just been doing zip for the longest time. But good news on the horizon. Here's what we got. So Google collaborates with Backed. ICE Digital Asset Platform Backed announced Friday was partnered with Google to introduce digital assets to millions of consumers. Well, this sounds good kinda but wait back was launched in 2018 by ice the parent company of the new york stock exchange so you think wow there's a lot of good money in there and they're going to do great they just haven't done anything this app has been coming for like the last ever and now it's just barely here back to explain that users will be able to add their virtual backed debit card into google pay to purchase everyday goods and services in store or wherever google is accepted well that sounds good uh until you read the next sentence Crypto, such as Bitcoin, will be converted to fiat currency for these payments to occur. Well, that's not so good because what we want the, these payment processors to do is to keep it into crypto. They won't do that because it's way too volatile, but at least it's a kind of a step in the right direction. But wait, there's good news on the horizon. Backed, uh, I selected Google Cloud. The company will make marketed solution powered by Google Cloud to leading retailers. Backed also plans to leverage Google Cloud's tools to build new analytics along with AI, machine learning, and geolocation function. Why is that important? I'm going to tell you why it's important. First of all, I didn't realize that the backed app was actually out and you could do stuff with it, but here it is. You can download the App Store or on the Google Play Store. I downloaded my phone. I've been playing around right now. I'll tell you how it works in a little bit, but this is the cool stuff. So this is from the Mac Store. You can send money. You can pay a friend back instantly with backed, send Bitcoin or pay them with cash, uh, or gift cards, 100 plus supporter brands, whether or not they are a backed user, whether or not they're a backed user or not. You can pay with Bitcoin or cash. Use Bitcoin Visa, debit card to send Bitcoin or cash in store or online, anywhere Apple Pay is accepted. And then you can track, and this is, I think is the big one, because what it, we just talked about with the uh, cloud storage, easily manage supported rewards programs side by side with your Bitcoin, gift cards and cash, and stay on top of all your money, convert points from supported rewards program. So this right here is why I'm like, that's a pretty good thing. Now, there's other, other programs that do that. Do that. StormX uh, comes to light right now, and the one we're going to talk about in a second comes in the second. Comes in the second, second. But in all honesty, if we're taking a look at rewards, why wouldn't these companies get on board with this? Like Marriott, Chipotle, I guess, Chase, Alaska Airlines, Ultra, um, Delta, Southwest Airlines, any kind of hotel chain, any kind of retailer, because they're like, oh, we're going to get you these rewards because people want to pay in crypto. We don't care what they do. We're going to transfer into fiat. That's fine. Oh, also on top of that, 
we've got another uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence and geolocation. We're going to be able to track so many things of what these people buy and give this data to you. Again, they're going to take your data. They're going to take your data. They're going to take your data. It's just the, the nature of the beast. And these things, these retailers are going to be like, I want that. I don't care what it is. I'll take the crypto. I'll convert it, whatever else. So this, to me, is positive. Unfortunately, the data stealing, uh, not a great thing. But it is what it is. So when we take a look at this, it is bullish news all the way around. But I think we are just a little bit more uh, privy to the good information. So that is uh, the conclusion of that one. And then also, when I think about rewards programs and things like that, the thing that I always think about is StormX because... First of all, I'm biased and I have a lot of StormX. And second of all, I use it. But then also, uh, there is another option back to StormX. And uh, there's a token uh, that is uh, integrated with Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. Crazy, right? And uh, it is called Shopping IO. And I just dropped a video on this on Dan Clips, which is where we do the advancements in digital assets and stuff like that. And I just went over a mini deep dive. And um, you can watch it. It's uh, live right now. There was it was not a promotional video. Uh, promotions are stuff like in the top left hand corner for iTrust Capital, but uh, I just do affiliate links these days. But uh, anyhow, this Shopping.io uh, they only have it's pretty crazy. They only have a million tokens. They uh, their all time high was around three hundred dollars. Now it's at fifty dollars, and they have an integration with all three of these companies. So. If you want to check those out, uh, you can do so. There's the video. I'll link at the very end. It's investment opinion, not investment advice. Looks interesting. And that's it. So look, uh, a lot of things going on. I think just like I thought, and a lot of people thought, I thought October was going to be great. I thought September was going to suck, which it did. October is going to be good. I think November is going to be better. And I think December is going to be fireworks. It's all going to be good compared to what we've gone through. So that is it for today. So look, if you stuck with me all the way to the end, thanks, I appreciate it. Also, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm and all that stuff. Consider subscribing. We talk about these things every single day as far as what's going on in the market because there's so many things going on. But that is it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.